Today I'm going to run you guys through a short list of my top 10 favorite shortcuts in Adobe Muse. And by shortcuts I mean uh, pretty much all keyboard shortcuts. Some involve the keyboard and the mouse, but they're just about all keyboard shortcuts. And these are the top 10 that I use the most often. And it won't necessarily be the top 10 that you use the most often, but hopefully you like it. And by the way, it's been a week since I posted about that design contest. If you click in the link in the description of this video, you'll be able to see who won. And it'll also be announced on the Muse Resources Facebook page. But at the time that I'm recording this, there's no official winner yet. But by the time you watch it, when it's published, there will be an official winner. And that winner will have won the Icon Mega Pack Vector Edition from Muse Resources. So that's a pretty cool uh, pretty cool win, but it is still available for anyone else who wants it to purchase it. So let's talk about these shortcuts. But I do want to warn you ahead of time that when I say command or option, a lot of you on the PC are going to be a little confused. Uh, I'm working on a Mac here, and my keyboard's slightly different from yours. If I say command or option, that is what the Mac users will be pressing or holding on their keyboard. Uh, for the PC users, command is control for you. If I say command, you press control uh, and option for the PC users is the alt key so again command is control for the PC users and option is alt for the PC users and for the Mac users you'll be able to follow along uh, completely the shift key is gonna be the same by the way the shift key is the same for the Mac users and the PC users so the first one that I have on here uh, I called it duplicate and place and what I mean by that is you can copy something and then paste something and then move it where you want it uh, if you want to do that in three steps. But let me make a box here just as an example. And let's say I've gone out of my way and styled this box. Let's say I make it orange and uh, get rid of that stroke around it. And I might need several of these orange boxes, right? Rather than hitting copy, then hitting paste, and then putting the second one where I want it, you can hold the option key. It is alt again on the PC and drag an object could be a text box could be a shape could be a photograph really just about anything and by option dragging or alt dragging on the PC you are effectively copying pasting and putting something where you want it all in one step instead of three so that's kind of a must I find myself doing that alt or option drag all the time can't live without that so that's number one number two you can scale an object, uh, like a photograph, from its center rather than from its corner. So see this tank top, for instance? This uh, tank top on JDMthreads.com is in the center, right? It's centered up. I can verify that by dragging it and seeing it locked to center. So if I decide to make it bigger or smaller, normally it wouldn't be centered anymore. If I scale it from the bottom right corner, it has pulled to the right, and it's pulled down because I grabbed the down right corner. I'm going to undo that with Command-Z. That, that one really doesn't count, but if you guys aren't using Command-Z for undo, uh, throw that one in there. Make that number 11. Uh, Command-Z for undo. Control-Z on the PC. So this number 2 right here is scale from center instead of scaling uh, from the opposite corner like this and going off center. If you hold the Alt or Option key, Option on a Mac, Alt on a PC, when you scale something, it scales from the center outward. It remains centered. Uh, you can scale it down or scale it up, but you'll notice the left side and the top side are moving outward equally as I drag the bottom and the right. So it keeps the object centered. Then we have constrain drag. Here's number three. Constrain dragging is to move something. Uh, let's take this button, for instance. Let's say I didn't have these other two. And I wanted to drag this across, but keep it lined up. Obviously, I don't want to drift up or down and have a misalignment, right? So if I start dragging something, I can even alt drag or option drag this to get a second copy. See, so I'm kind of drifting down. And I get these alignment guides, but it still lets me drift up and down. If you drag something while you're holding the shift key, I am now on a rail. See how my mouse is going up and down, but the object's not going up and down? By holding shift when you drag, it keeps the object on a rail. It constrains that drag. You can do it up or down, and it will not drift side to side, uh, or you can go side to side, and it will not drift up or down. So that one is really great if you're moving stuff around all the time. And if you hold shift before you click and drag, you can have weird problems with deselecting an object that's already selected especially if you're selecting multiple objects. So you don't have to hold shift when you start dragging, you just have to hold shift while you're dragging the object. Next we have number four, cropping an image. There is a crop tool built into Muse, it's up here, but if you don't wanna to switch to that crop tool, see how I have all this extra space out here? 
Um, this PNG graphic is in a transparent box, but that transparent box is too big. So if I want to shrink this down and crop out that extra stuff, I can hold the command key when I grab one of these handles and see how the image isn't shrinking? The shirt's staying the same size. The tank top's exactly the same size. I'm just cropping out the extra space. If I go too far, I am actually cropping the image itself. So uh, maybe that is what I want to do. Maybe I only want half of the tank tops. And again, that's holding command uh, or control if you're on a PC while you're dragging a handle in the corner of, uh, of an image uh, or, or the side. When it comes to this, you will end up with issues with photographs like the way it fits. So let me grab a photograph here. I'll grab a photo of my Lancer Evolution and I'll drop it in here like this. And let's say I want to make the photo smaller to get it to fit into a particular spot. So I command drag and I make the box the size that I need it. But now the car is kind of hanging off the edge. Uh, that's okay because there's another shortcut. This is kind of a bonus shortcut, part of number four. And it's to center and fill the uh, box. We're, we're going to keep the image filling the box, the bounding box as it's called, uh, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to center it up. So that shortcut with this image selected, the bounding box is selected, you hold Shift and Option or Alt if you're on a PC and Command all at the same time. Shift, Option, Command or Shift, Alt, Control if you're on a PC and you hit the letter C. Think of it like C for crop because it's going to crop the picture and fill the frame. So shift option command C and it centers it up. It now fits perfectly. It's centered up. It's filling the frame and uh, it's back to just being a regular picture. So I could just quickly do that command drag, get my box to be the size that I need it to be. It can be any size at all. Look, I can make this really out of whack. And then once it's really out of whack and I want to center it and fill it, shift option command C, boom, it's filled up, it's centered up. And uh, now I have less manual labor to do. So I'm a fan of that one. If you need to fit the whole picture though, right now we're cutting off the top and the bottom of the car. Uh, rather than shift option command C, you do shift option command E. Think of E as entire image. That's how I remember E, because it shows the entire image and fits it within that bounding box. So shift option command E, that's a pretty neat one. And then it goes back to being locked into place like a regular picture. That's pretty cool. When it comes to moving stuff around, here's number five nudging and nudging uses the arrow keys on the keyboard to nudge one pixel at a time I can go up down left right and by nudging you are going only one pixel at a time so it can take a while to get into place which is where part two of the shortcut comes in and that's to hold shift while you nudge with the arrow keys that goes 10 pixels at a time so if I need this to be 20 pixels up I can drag it to the line and I can go shift up up and that was 10 plus 10, 20 pixels up, so I don't have to go and deal with the uh, transform panel or any of that. I, I'm, I'm done. I can move this over to the side, over to the guide here. And I could go up, up, over, over, holding shift. And now I know I'm 20 pixels up, 20 pixels over. So uh, that's the shift while nudging with the arrow keys. The next one has to do with text. And this would be best with a block of text. I think I've got a block of text down here. I do. Great. Okay, so let me click into this block of text. And this is to adjust the kerning and the letting of the text. So kerning is the space in between all the characters. And the space in between all the characters right now is pretty close. But uh, let's say I just barely, barely, barely had too much text. And I wanted to squeeze it all together to make it fit. You can select a text box or you can highlight the text. And hold the Option or Alt key and you use the arrow keys on the keyboard left and right to tighten up or loosen up the kerning which is also referred to as tracking so as I'm doing that this is technically tracking because it's doing it for all of the characters at once whereas kerning would be in between individual characters so this is really technically tracking but as I expand and contract the tracking it, it is affecting the text palette so if I hit uh, command T another random shortcut there for you and as I do that, you can see this little AV, minus 3, minus 4. So you're really not doing something that you can't do otherwise, but the keyboard shortcut makes it a little easier uh, in case things are scrunched together. And then with Alt or Option, you can also go up and down to expand the letting. So you can see here that my lines are getting further and further apart. You can squeeze lines of text together or stretch them out. That's a really, really useful one, probably more useful than the uh, tracking or kerning. 
So that's pretty sweet. All right, so we got number six down. Kerning and letting, or tracking and letting was number six. Uh, number seven is huge, absolutely huge. And it's to send things backward and bring things forward. Uh, so let's say, for instance, I created this image before I created this black bar here. And uh, if that were the case, then it would probably look something like this, where it's behind the black bar. So uh, this is to send backward or bring forward one layer at a time. And if you've looked at your layers palette, then you understand that you have many, many layers if you have a complicated website. And it's to use command or control if you're on the PC and the bracket keys. Uh, the right bracket will bring something forward, the left bracket will send it backward. And notice how I'm doing this over and over again. You might even be able to hear me hitting the keyboard. As I'm doing this over and over again, I'm not really getting to where I need to be. Because there are so many layers. Each other shirt, each other tank top on here, um, each other hoodie, everything. Text boxes, everything counts as a layer. So as I'm bringing this forward, 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 I'm bringing it forward in front of some layers, but not in front of all of them until I hit it maybe a hundred times if I have a hundred layers. So that brings us to the next one. Bring to the front or send to the back. That means all the way to the front or all the way to the back. Instead of just doing uh, control or command with the brackets, you're going to add shift. So you're going to do shift command with the bracket keys or shift uh, control if you're on a PC with the bracket keys. That'll go all the way to the back, all the way to the front. Using that, you usually don't have to deal so much with send backward or bring forward. You can usually just do send to back or bring to front in most situations. If you need something to be on top, then you're good to go. Select it and send it on top. If I needed tank to be on top of the picture, the text to be on top of the picture, I wouldn't really have to deal with layer order. I could just bring tank all the way to the front and then when I slide this up, it's underneath. If I have a bunch of layers, then I could just select each one and bring it to the front in the order that I'd like them to be stacked in. So it's a really, really crucial shortcut there. Again, that's shift command or shift control with the bracket keys. Next up, we have hide. I like hide a lot because I layer things like crazy and I end up with a lot of things overlapping a lot of other things. And I end up driving myself insane because of all of the overlap. So to be able to hide something, you can select it, like heel toe. Let's say, I, that, let's say, for instance, that text was in my way. It's just control or command. Command if you're on a Mac, control if you're on a PC. And the number three, just the, the number key, the number three. So command three will hide an object. So I can just start hitting command three on all the things that aren't relevant to me at this moment. Say this background's annoying me. I will command three that. And now I don't have to deal with it. Now, part two, you probably guessed it, is to show everything that you've hidden. Because you can't select something once it's hidden, so you can't unhide one thing with a keyboard shortcut. Uh, you could go to the layers palette and start unhiding things, but to unhide everything and show all, you do option command three or alt control three if you're on uh, PC. So that'll just bring everything back. So you can just go and hide stuff like crazy. Boom, 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 boom. And then, oh, I need that black bar back, so I'll do option, boom, boom. And there we go, it comes right back. Everything comes right back, real nice. The next one is kind of related, and that is lock. This is number 10, to lock an object. And that one's pretty easy. Command or control if you're on the PC, and the letter L for lock. So I can lock that, lock that. Oops, I hit the wrong button. Lock that, lock that, there we go. And now I can't accidentally drag these or move these. I can grab something that's behind it now. So if you layer things a lot and you want to grab something that's behind something else, lock the thing that's in the front and grab the thing that's behind it. It will allow you to do that. It essentially makes things see through um, or grab through because you can see it still. It's accomplishing what hide accomplished, but it's still visibly available. Really great shortcut. And then this one is just like hide where we can unlock everything at the same time, but we can't unlock uh, individual things one at a time unless we use the layers palette. So to unlock all, it is just like hide, we add the option key. So instead of just command L or control L, it's option command L or alt control L to unlock everything. And then you can go and click on everything again. Everything's selectable again. So that's all 10 of them, but I do have a bonus one, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are already familiar with this one. Uh, this one blew my mind once I found out about it, but uh, it only blew my mind because one thing about Muse drove me insane, and it's kind of 
a fix for copy and pasters who have been driven insane by this. So let's take a look at one of the shirt pages like this one. Okay, so I've got a paragraph of text here, right? And it fits nicely uh, underneath the label that says t-shirt. If I copy this and I go to another page and I delete that description, if I hit paste now, oh great, it pasted up and to the right and on top of all this other stuff. Uh, that, that really sucks and now I have to put it where it belongs. Uh, that, that's terrible and I would expect paste to paste it where it came from and it turns out there is a separate option called paste in place that behaves the way you'd expect paste to behave and instead of hitting command V for paste or control V for paste uh, you hit shift option command V all three of those at the same time for you PC users it is shift alt control V that is paste in place so paste in place is big if you're going from one page to another and you want things to be in the same spot so that's kind of a, a bonus number 11 so I hope you guys really like this keyboard shortcut tutorial uh, I, I'm a huge fan of keyboard shortcuts and if you're not and this was overwhelming watch it again maybe pick up one keyboard shortcut maybe learn one this week and use it and then next week pick another one maybe even just go through them in order if you do that you will eventually know all of these shortcuts like the back of your hand because I can't get anything done without doing every single one of them so I hope you guys have already subscribed but if you haven't please subscribe I will have more stuff coming soon and next week's tutorial is gonna be really cool I think you guys will like it a lot it's gonna be uh, back to the back to the fun graphic scroll motion type of stuff so Stay tuned.